Okay, okay, L let's play out this scenario. Let's say that I phone you on Monday morning and Bitcoin has broken through 31,000 and closed through 31,000, mm -hmm. which by the way, I think is going to happen over the weekend. Okay. What happens then? Then do you change your thesis? Yeah, so, so basically once we get above 30,000 and we close above 30,000, I'm waiting for a couple days to make sure that it stays there. And then my thesis says, okay, now the bottom has been proven that it is in on Bitcoin. All right. So I know that's what you want to get out of me. You want that so bad. And I'm, I'm willing to give it to you when the charts tell me that it's there. Okay, listen, what do you make of this? So if I look at this is the Bitcoin on the three month uh, chart, it looks to me like the, the 2017 high or the 2017 resistance now becomes this like support level. Do you, do you buy this or, or am, I, am I looking at this maybe the wrong way around? No, no, that you're absolutely right. Right. And then that's exactly where Bitcoin found its support right around that 15, 16, 17,000 range, right? When we dip down. So you're at, that's a great trend line. That's exactly how I would read it. That is support. And that's why you're getting the technical bounce that you're getting now, which has Bitcoin, like you said, up about 88% off of the lows. Okay. Now I want to take you to another chart. This is the chart that our DGENs in our community, because we're an old. And look at now we're breaking that line. So assuming we close below here today and we confirm, then you got to think that you're having more downside on the Dixie, which would take us down to about your double bottom here at about 100.85 on the Dixie. So that this, this actually looks like it got the bounce. Now it's breaking to the downside on the chart and you probably are headed lower on the Dixie. Three month trade on the Dixie. Where do you see the Dixie in three in three months? I do see it lower. In three months, I see it lower. Yeah. Do you believe? Do you believe? Or are you scared of or concerned about this this movement around de-dollarization? I mean, we did a show uh, earlier this week where we spoke about. It seems I don't know if it's an, a, a, a narrative or a concerted effort by Russia rallying China, Saudi Arabia, UAE, India all to start moving away from the dollar as a settlement currency and starting moving towards the yuan and maybe even the ruble. But specifically, I think they're going for the yuan. Does that like worry you that, or do you believe it? Are you one of the believers that the world is going to start moving away from the dollar, that there's a real risk that the dollar is not going to be king anymore? Yeah. So for years, I've said that, that China wants to be the reserve currency of the world. And I think this is just one step in that direction. The biggest thing for me is that that type of movement is going to take years to happen. So it's, it's, it is starting. You're absolutely right. It is starting 100%. All right. I'm going to go long Bitcoin. Um, I'm going to go long Bitcoin, long gold. Um, I'm not going to comment on the other two. I'm not going to trade them. I'm, si I'm sitting out. Sometimes the best trade is not to trade at all. Gareth, That's I know right. you need to go and open uh, your your uh, your your um, streams. Uh, by the way, there is a link to Gareth's uh, uh, channel down below. Fast growing channel, huge alpha. Just click it, subscribe, do what you need to do, guys. You know the story. Gareth, much love, brother. I'm going on vacation. I'll see you again in two weeks. Much love. Have a great vacation, buddy. Great, buddy. All right, so that's Gareth. Now, we spoke about Gareth. We spoke about the charts. Um, I'm going to show you something a little bit concerning on the charts. I know we don't like to talk about concerning things, but probably worth, yeah, someone says run only does longs because I'm always bullish. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a bull by nature. In my nature, I'm an optimistic person. So I find it very hard to go short unless it's going short on Aptos. So I, I have no problem going short on Aptos. Anyway, let's get into the meat and potatoes. Remember, if you are new to the channel, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Highest alpha channel in the world today, I think, on crypto. By the way, I want to know what other channels you guys are watching because sometimes I want to watch crypto content and I really struggle watching crypto content. I really do. I try and watch George, very struggle to watch George, struggle to watch BitBoy. I do enjoy Ivan every now and then. Let me know what you guys are watching. I want to know pumping again, as usual, Chinese coins, Chinese narrative, always running. But the chart that, that is for us as DGENs, the most concerning is this chart over here. It's the Bitcoin dominance chart. We've been talking about this Bitcoin dominance chart for a few days now. And we do seem to be at that resistance point again, that 48, uh, 48, but I actually think it's a bit higher. 48.5 is the resistance point. And usually when that happens, or you can see last time when this happened in um, June, 2022, which was just after Luna, you can see that we got into a bit of a run and the dominance and the dominance dropped. And if you try and if you do zoom out, okay, let's just see if we can get a bigger, can we get a, let's see if we can get a bigger Bitcoin dominance chart here, btc.d. We're not getting, we're not getting a better chart, but the, the worrying thing here is that if you look at the Bitcoin dominance, we're seeing it as 48%, but if you dig deeper into the Bitcoin dominance, 
and you remove. So, so James Van Straten says he creates this chart, which says realize he calls it the realized cap dominance, realized cap values tokens at price move on chain, which filters out co uh, founders coins, scam coins, Ponzi's, etc. And if you look at the Bitcoin dominance on this chart, Bitcoin actually has a 60% plus dominance. So the red is obviously Bitcoin. I take it that the now we're out of the woods when it comes to those two metrics, but actually tomorrow is the big metric. So tomorrow we're getting the, um, the uh, uh, PCE, which is personal consumption expenditure, which is actually the measure of, inf of inflation that the Fed actually look, like, look for. Now, the previous PCE was 4.7%. So let's see what we get tomorrow. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'll be live with you guys tomorrow. But otherwise, we're looking for anything under 4.7. If we get anything under 4.7, number go up, market go up. Interestingly, I mean, you know why we're watching this? Because if inflation goes down, the chances of the Fed increasing interest rates further is reduced. And right now, as it stands, you can see that the market is betting that there's no, more in, there's no interest rate increase in, in May. In fact, let's just go straight here. No interest rate increase in May, no interest rate increase in, actually one interest rate increase in May, one interest rate increase in June, and then starting to do or, or to stay stable. So one more interest rate increase in May, then no interest rate increase in June, and then the market actually to start reducing and to have three reductions by the end of the year. That is what um, the, the, the Fed is pricing in. Now, interesting enough, there was a, a group of people that had a meeting with Powell and it was an off-camera meeting. And in this meeting, something pretty interesting happened. So using the Chinese yuan, so moving away from using the dollar as the base currency, it seems like this is getting a whole lot of momentum now. And that a lot of very smart people, including Elon Musk, are starting to, to get concerned about the de-dollarization. Maybe people not using the dollar anymore. And we're seeing a lot more of these headlines. Like we saw a headline that says, China and the UAE have completed the world's first yuan settled LNG trade in a blow to US dollar dominance. That happened a few days ago. Um, here is a list of BRICS nations that want to be detached or have joined to be detached from the dollar. And here are the rest that have actually requested memberships, okay, to also be detached from the dollar. Saudi Arabia entered into a trade alliance with China, Russia, India, and Pakistan, and four other central nations. And they are considering using the yuan over the US dollar for US dollar settlement. A the ASEAN countries, which is all these countries over here, Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore, all the A ASEAN, Asian countries, they are also considering dropping the US dollar for local financial settlement. So you can see that there is a, tr a trend and you can see just in the last two weeks, Saudi Arabia considers accepting Chinese yuan for oil sales. China and France complete the first LNG trade using yuan. 